Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the properties of logarithms. One thing to keep in mind is we talked about uh, logarithms are exponents. So the properties that you see here will look very, very similar to the laws of exponents that we use. So let's take a look um, at some of our properties here. We know that log base 2 of 32 equals 5 because 2 to the fifth power equals 32. Okay, log base answer equals exponent. So 2 to the fifth is equal to 32. Well, we also know that factors of 32 are 8 times 4. So we can ask ourselves too, we should know what log base 2 of 8 is. Log base 2 of 8 is 3. And log base 2 of 4 is 2. And of course we know 8 times 4 is 32. And we also know that 3 plus 2 equals 5. And sure enough, log base 2 of 32 equals 5. So our factors of 32, if we take their logarithms, log base 2 of 8 is 3, plus log base 2 of 4 is 2, and we add them together, 3 plus 2 is 5, that brings us to our first rule. Thus, log base 2 of 32 will equal log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 4. So we can take our answer and split it into the product or the sum of its two factors and take their logarithms and add them together. Just like a power times a power, we add the exponents here. We're going to add the logarithms. So our rule says log base b of x times y equals the log base b of x plus the log base b of y. A power times a power, we add our exponents. And so that is our product rule. We can apply the same type of concept to, vis to division. <clears throat> we know that log base 2 of 64 equals 6. We also know log base 2 of 16 equals 4 and log base 2 of 4 equals 2. Well, log base 2 of 16, that would be the same thing as saying 64 divided by 4. So we know 64 divided by 4 is 16. So we could rewrite log base 2 of 16 as log base 2 of 64 divided by 4. And then, of course, that will be the equivalent of log base 2 of 16. So if we have a power divided by a power, or a logarithm divided by a logarithm, sure enough, 64 divided by 4 is 16, and 6 minus 2 is 4. So that leads us right to our quotient rule that says, log base 2 of 16 or log base 2 of 64 divided by 4 is the equivalent of log base 2 of 64 minus log base 2 of 4. So a power divided by a power, we subtract our logarithms or we subtract our exponents. So that leads us to our quotient rule. And our quotient rule says that log base b of x divided by y, power divided by a power, we subtract our exponents. Log base b of x minus log base b of y. So we subtract the logarithm of the denominator from the logarithm of the numerator. And of course, this works only if we have the same base, just like the product rule. The base had to be the same. Okay. Be careful, though, take note that log base b of x divided by y is not log base b of x divided by log base b of y. It's 
log base b of x minus log base b of y. So we have to be careful not to divide those, but when we have a power divided by a power, we actually subtract the exponents. So in this case, we subtract the logarithms. So we've had a power times a power. We add the exponents or the logarithms. We've had a power divided by a power or we subtract the logarithms, we subtract the exponents. But what about a power raised to a power? Well, we have log base 5 of 8 is the same thing as log base 5 of 2 cubed, which 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. So we have log base 5 of 2 times 2 times 2. This is not too much unlike our log base 2 of 32, where we split it into 8 times 4. Now we're taking 8 and we're splitting it into 2 times 2 times 2. So if we used our product rule, that would be log base 5 of 2 plus log base 5 of 2 plus log base 5 of 2. We would simply add our logarithms together. Well, I have 3 log base 5 of 2. So we're repeating this three times, so that would imply that log base 5 of 2 cubed is 3 times log base 5 of 2. So that leads us to our power rule. A power raised to a power, we multiply the exponents, and sure enough, we multiply our logarithms. So our power rule says log base b of x raised to the r power, log base b of x raised to the r power equals r times log base b of x. And how I always remembered this, I just remembered that, that this r comes down and becomes multiplication here. So there we have our three rules. There are a couple special rules for exponents. One of them is log base b of b raised to the x. So our answer is the same as our base raised to some power equals our exponent or our power here. So if I ask you to find log base 5 of 5 to the fourth, well, using our, our power rule, isn't that the equivalent of 4 times log base 5 of 5? And log base 5 of 5 here is 1, so this becomes 4 times 1, which is 4. And sure enough, our, our special rule said, well, log base b of b to the x, that just becomes our answer. And sure enough, log base 5 of 5 to the 4th is just 4. So if I ask you to find log base 3 of 9, well, you might know off the top of your head that is 2, but that's the same as log base 3 of 3 squared, because 9 is the equivalent of 3 squared. We just rewrite it in the same base. It is going to be 2, using our special rule over here. Our second special rule says b all raised to log base b of x is equivalent to x. Well, this is kind of like exponential form. This is our base, and this is an exponent equals our answer. And if I looked at this carefully, if I rewrote this in logarithmic form, I'd have log base b of x equals, well, log base b of x, because my exponent is my answer here in logarithmic form. So log base b of x equals log base b of x. Well, it's kind of like, duh, but that tells us that these x's are the same. Let's look at it one with, with actual numbers in it. So find log base 4 of 10. Well, we might know by our special rule that our answer is going to be 10. 
but let's go ahead and rewrite this into log form. So log form would say log base four of x, because we don't know what our answer is, equals our exponent log base four of 10. Well, these two now mirror each other. They're both in logarithmic 4. So log base 4 of x equals log base 4 of 10. So then 4 raised to the log base 4 of 10 equals 10. So those, the x and the 10 are equivalents. So let's wrap up with some quick samples. Using our product rule, I'm just going to ask you to rewrite these using the specified rule. So log base 4 of 3 times 7, well, we'll use our product rule. That's log base 4 of 3 plus log base 4 of 7. That's all that we're asking for there. Log base 8 of 10 plus log base 8 of 3, well, we're going to go in the opposite direction now. This is the equivalent of log base 8 of 10 times 3, or log base 8 of 30. I'll leave C for you to do to bring that to class. Let's take a look at our quotient rule. We have log base 7 of 9 divided by 4. So we have a power divided by a power, so we subtract our exponents or we subtract our logarithms. So log base 7 of 9, we subtract the denominator from the numerator, so log minus log base 7 of 4. And in B, we're going to go in the opposite direction. Now we have them separated into two logarithms. We're going to put them into 1. So we have log base 3 of P minus log base 3 of Q. So we end up with log base 3 of P divided by Q. So I'll leave C for you to do in class. It's going to look something like A here, but there's a little twist because log base, we're going to have log base 4 of 16. You're going to be able to figure out what that, figure out what that is. Our power rule, our power rule, this is my favorite because I think it's the easiest to learn. The exponent just comes down in front of the log, so we end up 2 times log base 3 of 5. So B, log base A of x to the fourth, bring our 4 down, it comes out of as a power and becomes a multiplier for log base A of x. And again, C is a little bit of a challenge problem. Uh, I'll leave that for you to bring to class and we'll review that one. And we also have some examples of combined. So log base 6 of 36 times m to the fifth. Well, that's 5 times log base 6 of m plus log base 6 of 36. Ooh, log base 6 of 36 is 2. So our final answer here is 2 plus 5 times log base 6 of m. Here we have a power divided by a power, or we're going to subtract our exponents. So our numerator involves both the product rule. Here it becomes 2 log base x of r plus 2, not the 2, plus log base x of 
8, because this is 8 times r squared, and then minus log base x of the quantity m minus 1. So I'll let you try and tackle c here. c, 2 log base a of x plus 3 log base a of y, where we're going to go back into this particular format. It may take a couple steps to do that. I'll get you started. We have log base a of x squared. And we have, this one is log base a of y to the third, but we're adding these. Actually, I'm going to end up doing this for you. We'll do log base a of x squared times y cubed. And finally, our special products. So log base 10 of 10 to the fifth, well, that's the same as 5 times log base 10 of 10. And we know log base 10 of 10 is 1, so it becomes 5 times 1, which is 5. If we use our special rules, we would have recognized right away that our answer is 5. And 5 log base 5, 5 of 9, okay, this is an exponential form. This is my base, and this is my exponent equals some answer. Well, if I rewrote this into logarithmic form, okay, my answer will call that x. In logarithmic form, that's log base 5 of x equals log base answer equals exponent. And my exponent is log base 5 of 9. So log base 5 of x equals log base 5 of 9. These are both in exponential form, or pardon me, they're both in logarithmic form. So my x has to be my 9. So I get x equals 9. And if we followed our rules, we would have seen we can just bring that 9 down. So 5 raised to the log base 5 of 9 equals 9. So that wraps up our introduction to logarithms. And I will see you in class.